welcome to 70 times 7 the platform where the dynamics of forgiveness is explored we are living in a cruel world we are living in a world where as the days go by it becomes unsafe and more unsafe than the day before we're living in a world where parents hesitate to allow their children to walk to the shops and stores on their own. We are living in a world where if we focus so much on the evil that exists in it, it would be very easy to be depressed. In fact, had it not been for the hope we have in the second coming of Jesus Christ, our life itself would be hopeless. So yes, we are living in a terrible world at a terrible time. But life is amazing. In this sin-sick, sin-infested world, it is possible to find goodness and love and mercy and, yes, forgiveness as well. While it is important to acknowledge the world in which we live in, it's also extremely important to recognize that what happens inside our hearts does not necessarily have to depend on the circumstances we find ourselves in. We may not have control over what happens around us, but indeed we have control over how we respond to what happens to us. Mm. In me, with me in the studio today is Pastor Busi Bartholomew Kumalo. Busi, thank you for being with me again. Thank you. And our special guest today is Hermi Munez. Hermi oh. Munez, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Hermi Munez is a good friend of mine, and we work together. Hermi <coughs> Munez is a missionary in Southern Africa. He has been serving God and serving the church for many, many years in this beautiful country, South Africa. We want to thank you for the decision the Lord has led you to, Hermie, many years ago, mm. bringing your family to South Africa so that you can serve his church and be an instrument in his hand so that the gospel can be spread and Jesus can come soon. Mm. Before we go into our discussion, I'm truly amazed at the dynamic structure of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, where we are not so much territorial or nationalistic, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is blessed with a global vision to bring people to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Mm. The hope that the Seventh-day Adventist Church preaches, the hope that is in Jesus Christ, is a hope that is preached not just locally but globally. And we thank God that in each region of the church, we have a, mix, a mixture of a variety of people so that God can use to spread the gospel. What's interesting is that in my introduction, I mentioned that we are living in a crime-infested world. And for those of you who are watching, if there's any uh, older people who were young before, and you've watched the movie Karate Kid, <laughs> you would notice that my friend Hermie here <laughs> is a very close resemblance to Miyagi. <laughs> from Karate Kid. And Hermi has been affectionately called in close circles Miyagi. But for the purposes of this show, to maintain the dignity of this show, we will refer you as, to, as Hermi correctly. I want you to know that it is a great, great struggle for me <laughs> to call you by your correct name. But I will do it. Right? So, Hermi, we want to welcome you. Thank you. And we pray that your experience on this show will be a blessing to you and a blessing to our viewers and to us as well. So welcome. For before we go, before I engage Hermi in a discussion or Pastor Kumalo in a discussion, recently Hermi's family was invaded by burglars in his home. These were armed men who forcefully entered his home. 
And I'm going to allow him to elaborate a little more and give us a little more detail so that we can understand the outcome of our discussion. But just to help us get into it, I received a phone call one day. And the phone call was from my friend, Hermie Munoz. And I could hear in his voice that he was disturbed. He was traumatized. And I asked him, Hermie, where are you? He told me I'm in the office. This was late at night, or should I say early hours of the morning. He had gone to the office with his family, entire family. That's right. His wife and four cho three, two children. Two wives. Your, your two daughters were studying in the Philippines at that time. Hermie had been through a very traumatic experience, and he called me, and I could hear in his voice that he needed me. And so I asked him where he was. He was at the, the office. I can't quite remember whether I went to pick him up or he came home, but I invited him home. He stayed with us for about a month or two weeks or so, I'm not sure. Two weeks. Two weeks. He lived with us because what he had been through was a very traumatic experience. When these armed men entered his home, these armed men placed a pillow over his wife's head, over the face of his young son, Zuria. These armed men tied his young daughter, age 12 at that time, or 11. No, I was the one who was tied. Okay. They jammed all of them in a room, and they put a gun to the head of him and his family. They caught his wife by her hair, switched the stove on. Wow dragged her and told that if he does not disclose where their money is, they would burn the face of his wife. His young son really didn't know how to handle this and just screamed his name and his mother's name. He disclosed to us later that during this whole ordeal, his wife instructed them to sing during this time. It was truly a traumatic experience. And that's what we are going to discuss today. Is forgiveness possible after going through such an experience? Please, don't go away. Stay with us. We'll be right 